here we have some measurements on the basic characteristics of the PAL composite test signal coming from directly from my signal generator. From left to right we have the synchronizing pulse for each horizontal line, followed by the color burst signal which is used for color reference. Then we have the obvious bar signal which is a DC component going from black to white and back again followed by a narrow 2T, 2T pulse used for pulse distortion measurements and at the center we have a 20T pulse which is a chrominance test signal slightly longer in duration with an envelope and with the chrominance filling and then at the right we have luminance steps going from black to white in six steps and this is used basically for nonlinearity measurements which are often an issue in analog TV transmitters with linear amplifiers or nonlinear as the case may be. So the first measurement we can make with this is the horizontal pulse analysis, horizontal timing. The duration of the synchronizing pulse should be 4.7 microseconds, which it is. The amplitude of the pulse should be 300 millivolts below black level, which it is. Only a couple of millivolts off. And the duration of the color burst at the right, alternating phase as you can see, PAL alternating phase. The duration is 2.25 microseconds, which it is normally supposed to be and the amplitude should be 300 millivolts peak to peak, which it is a few millivolts off nominal, which is percentage-wise very low. So a very nice signal. Moving further down, we had the bar signal. <coughs> and for the bar, we measure an amplitude of 691.5 millivolts, 700 nominal also. Also very little distortion, percentage-wise. Bar tilt is measured at 0% and we can still see also visually that the, the top of the bar is very flat. Bar width is 10 microseconds, which is the nominal value also. Excellent test signal. No distortion there. Further down, we had the 2T pulse. So we're going to a measurement called K-factor, and this would indicate any pulse response issues. There's no ringing at the base of the 2T signal, and there's also no overshooting, undershooting. The distortion is measured at less than half a percent, and the half amplitude duration is 200 nanoseconds, i.e. the 2T duration. Next in the test signal, let's go back again just to remind ourselves, we have the luminance steps. And by differentiating these steps, we can measure the difference in amplitude between them and effectively be able to assess the nonlinearity. Of course, we can see from the scope image already that the linearity is, is probably very good. Luminous nonlinearity differentiated steps. So the distortion is less than 0.2%. What we'd like to do next is to measure differential phase and differential gain. And the way this is done is we find a test signal that has the chrominant subcarrier 4.43 megahertz superimposed on the steps and there we have it. This signal can then be used for measuring differential gain, differential phase. This is between each step and we're looking at values of a few tenths of a percent. Excellent results. Now let's see what signal we can find next move further down.
here we have the chrominance amplitude distortion test signal and going into chrominance A and PM conversion we can measure the chrominance amplitude modulation noise and also the phase modulation noise this is measured over the color burst signals in, in both fields even and odd fields so the AM noise at minus 62 dB and RMS and phase noise at 65 dB below nominal level RMS of course excellent signals and our next chrominance nonlinearity signal would be the as previous was distortion of course being a noise measurement and nonlinearity can be measured here by comparing the three burst packets of the color and the figures we're seeing for amplitude error in the order of half a percent phase error less than half a percent and the intermodulation between chrominance and luminance is ne negligible at about 0.1, 0 0.2% what we'll do next is we'll see what other signals we have available to us for measurement there's some text in the image there this is a multi-burst signal the color bars let's take a look at the color bars the easiest way for an engineer to assess the correctness of colors is to take a look at the vector scope plot which has a graticule and we can see there the different color components their amplitude and their phase and we can also see the color burst reference at plus minus 45 degrees at the left so a very good signal we can also make more defined measurements on this but especially for automation we need to have numerical values and for that reason we'll also take a look at the color bar measurement which will give us real numbers back the top plot is luminance level absolute luminance the center plot is is chrominance amplitude level and chrominance phase at the bottom which is then actually the color at the bottom we can see the colors yellow cyan green magenta red blue black Moving further down, take another look at the waveform mode. Let's see what signal we'll find next. Here we have a double sine x over x pulse. The one on the left is going from black to white, and its pair on the white is going from white to black. This actually makes the calculation FFT calculation much much easier to process. This is used for measuring frequency response and group delay of the video content but can be used also for measuring the characteristics of the transmission channel. There's a special measurement here called SINEX group delay which does this Fourier transform calculation at the top we have amplitude response, half a dB per division, very flat indeed up to 5.5 megahertz and even beyond, and the group delay nanoseconds, 50 nanoseconds per vertical division in this plot. Group delay of course is the time differential of phase. Group delay is, is much easier to interpret. So, let's take another look at the waveform display. 
see if we can find a multi burst. Signal without the text that we had before. Okay, here we have the multi burst signal. This is the older measurement for measuring frequency response. We have six different packets of increasing frequency and we also have a reference signal at the very beginning, a low frequency component. And by going into the multiburst measurement, we'll get a display of the frequency response measured over these six frequencies compared to the reference pulse. And these values are a couple of tenths of a dB within specification, which of course is a very good result. While we're speaking of frequency response issues, we're of course we're also interested in signal-to-noise ratio. We'd like to know what the noise characteristics are, and we can make a measurement on that also. We need to find what we call a black line, i.e. a line with no content, and here we have one. This is in the vertical interval, this is line 322. And of course we can see here within the, in the time domain in this oscilloscope picture, waveform picture, we can see that there is practically no noise, but we can also do an FFT of that on the VM700, go into the noise spectral measurement, and the noise here is really, really low. It's at minus 82 dB compared compared to full amplitude of 700 millivolts white. We can also see that a filter is on at the moment at 5 megahertz. We can turn that filter off and we can measure now the system noise all the way up to 7 megahertz. So no visible, no, no noise issues here. So here we have some elementary measurements for the VM700. If I have time and find some more enthusiasm, I'll probably make another video on some actual TV transmitter measurements. These will then include interesting tests with, for example, ICPM, intercarrier phase modulation. Sorry, uh, incidental carrier phase modulation. And also some other interesting measurements. Maybe, maybe we could also do some audio measurements using the CCITT automatic test sequence. Thank you for watching.